This is HRT 125, Plants of Society, and this is Unit 11, Plants with Medicinal Uses. Humans have used plants through almost all of their history. Uh, it's been written down for thousands of years. We have many different uh, manuscripts, uh, such as the Pensal, uh, written in Chinese thousands of years uh, before Christ. We have Indian documents that are out there, all describing how we have used different plants to treat different diseases and ailments in the human society. We have manuscripts called the uh, Berianas manuscript that the Aztecs produced. This was hundreds of pages about how different plants found in the jungle to be used to treat different diseases. The Europeans that came over there were amazed that the Aztecs had all this written down at the time. Uh, there were drawings. This was a huge manuscript that was translated by the priests back into Latin. The priests were the ones that utilized this, and as they brought this back to Europe, they were able to treat many of the diseases. At that time, uh, the Europeans didn't realize that there were millions of North American people at that time. Uh, they didn't have a cure for the different viruses such as smallpox, which killed uh, millions of Americans at that time. We study this relationship <coughs> excuse me, between plants and air, plants and people, which is called ethnobotany. We've been studying this for many years to see how Plants can be used for food, medicine, uh, cosmetics, uh, in our clothing industry to dye our clothes, for building, uh, for tools, uh, for money, and for music. Uh, plants have a huge role in the evolving of the whole human race. Uh, other manuscripts uh, that we find out there we have the Ebers Papyrus in 1515 BC, which talks about marijuana. Uh, marijuana to be used as a topical, topical uh, application for inflammation. We have other books that are out there. For this example, the Materia Medica, which is written in 1334 in Arabic, talking about how we use uh, cumin and dill to treat various diseases. We can see for many years we have used plants to treat our diseases. We don't even know what was being done in Chinese at the time. In China, uh, the whole idea of having a pharmacy made out of plants has been growing for thousands of years. We are now beginning to embrace this in the United States. There's examples of how they treated the malaria, for example thousands of years before Christ. Uh, we still don't understand some of the uses that the Chinese have used with their plants. We know that they're effective, but we're not quite sure how they work yet. When the French first came to the Americas, they called the Native American healers uh, uh, medicine men. Uh, these were people uh, found throughout the world, actually, that had a natural gift for healing. And it may be that they had a better memory, that they understood that this plant could be used to treat uh, inflammation, this plant could be used to treat allergies, this could be to treat infection, but they remembered this. We started out early on that if we looked at a plant, we thought, well, maybe it has a shape, and if we use that shape, it could be used to treat humans. Uh, for example, uh, this, this mandrake root. In the Doctrine of Signatures, which is, defines the shape of the plant as how it's to be used, uh, we thought this looked like a man. 
and that we can use is to treat the different ailments of the sexual system. We found another plant called Raufia serpentina. Its root looked like a huge snake. And we thought, well, you know, this plant then could get into our system and all the bad humors that were there, it would eat and change those bad humors into good things. And so if we had elevated blood pressure, this root of this plant could cure the problem. And it did work. Another one was a blood root. And people found this plant, they cut out the root, and it looked red. And this appeared to be bloody to many people. So they thought they would try it out on skin lesions. And it turned out that it was very effective at controlling the inflammation of skin lesions. And also for the destruction of abnormal skin tumors growing in the body. So it was used first as a to treat uh, breast cancer. It worked well. It killed off the breast cancer. It, it came in contact with it. Uh, however, it was not good for treating the systemic parts of the breast cancer. Today, we use it actually in two bases as an antibacterial or an anti-plaquehate. Uh, cannabis, uh, marijuana. Humans have used this Again, thousands of years. Uh, it can be found in almost every area of the world, uh, excluding the polar regions. At one point, it was uh, huge in numbers across the United States. It's a very easy plant to grow. It's a very easy plant to grow inside. Um, it's called a short day plant. Uh, which makes it ideal for indoor growing. Uh, the flowers form as the day in length decreases. It has been used for just about everything. At one point, it was part of the Sears catalog. It was used to, as a mulch plant. It was used uh, to help people feel better as a general tonic. Uh, it was used in cough syrup. It was used uh, for child's colic. It's been used uh, to treat many tooth pains throughout the years. In the United States, we have the echinacea, the purple cornflower. We see this now in uh, people's yards. We use it a lot for landscaping. Uh, it was used by the uh, North American Plains Indians for many diseases. Uh, nowadays, uh, we use it for cold preparations. It appears that it may affect our uh, immunity uh, as well as our ability to fight infections. 